What's up, dudes and dudes to the internet? We are back in some more troll. And today we're gonna be doing the 2024 flux farming tutorial. This is gonna be a huge information dump video, you guys. Probably going to end up being pretty long as well. I will put timestamps, but you got to keep in mind that as we end up going through each of the different daily bonuses, I'm going to tell you guys what you should be gathering on those days uh, and so on and so forth. But I am also going to include random tips throughout the video. So I would encourage you to watch through the entirety of it. But I mean, I don't know. You could do it at two times speed or whatever. Smash like. I'd appreciate it before we get started and otherwise let's get into it because oh boy it's gonna be a doozy so first we got delve day which oddly enough doesn't seem to say that it ends up giving you more of your lunar souls and titan souls and stuff like that i'm pretty sure it does it, it, either it gives you twice as much uh, you know, just in general, or it just makes it so that you get your weekly amount faster. I forget what it is, but it's basically the old shadow tower boost that we used to have on a different day. So the reason why this is important is because in the delves on top of just the various shadow tower resources from back in the day, you'll still get shadow shards and they will be a lot more common. And thus the shadow tower entrance portal is useful again, because you can end up getting the uh, shadow cash, the shadow boxes, and you could sell those on the market for a decent amount, but you could also go for the risk and unbox them yourself so that you can end up getting um, Titans uh, hearts and then, or hearts of darkness, sorry. And hearts of darkness are always going to end up being a valuable item because they are an item that players will end up using most of the time for the gem augmentation items. They require hearts of darkness or at least one of the cheapest items for gem augmentation because otherwise most of the gem augmentation items are either untradeable or they are time gated. Whereas this is something that you can just buy from the market outright. Now on top of doing your daily delve stuff, you're also going to end up gaining Titan souls, which can be converted into Titan's treasures. You can see I'm a bit of a hoarder. And so I don't actually convert any of them. However, I have heard from a lot of people that it's actually very profitable to either sell the Titan treasure boxes themselves. Sometimes people are stupid and sell them for a ridiculous amount and people actually buy them, which I don't understand, or you can unbox them yourself. And I, I, I don't know what the maximum amount of flux is you can get out of these boxes. I think it's just a stack, so 10K, but that's gonna be like the rarer of the drops. So I, I would just say to be cautious of that. Now I just had to get out of there because the Shadow Tower music triggers me. Moving on to gathering day. This is going to be the biggest part of the video because there are so many different things that are affected by gathering day, namely ores, plants and fish, which are going to be a huge detriment to you trying to get as much flux as possible. Not necessarily the best stuff for flux, but I'm going to go through these in a nonlinear order. So in the Sundered Uplands biome, uh, the biome itself, for those of you that might be just coming back to Trove, there's basically a surface level and an under level, and each of those is going to end up having various plants. You can go to either or to grind some of the rarer plants so that you can end up selling those on the player market. They are good and valuable. Bombs, like not Bomber Royale, but bombs for adventuring are also going to end up being quite valuable. You can either Grind these resources raw yourself because they all count as ore on gathering day and then craft it up to bombs and sell the bombs. Or you could buy the resources outright, craft them up to bombs. And usually, not in all instances, but usually the bombs will actually be a profit. So you have to actually make quite a few bombs in order to actually see a profit, uh, but just FYI. Now, if we head on over to Geode Surface, Nitro Ore is going to also be very, very important because it is a ore that will always remain valuable because it is used to craft up crystal gear. Now, there's three different colors, as you can see for the biomes, there's the light pink, uh, the dark red, and then south of us, you can kind of see the medium red. So the medium red is the biome that you're looking for, the one that has the little wave going to the left icon, whatever. Um, that is going to be the biome that has the caves generate underground that has the nitro. Now, back in the day, what people would usually end up doing is what they call Gonda trains, where one person would be riding on Gonda, uh, and then a bunch of people would be following along on the golden trail, throwing bombs left and right and all over the place. Keep in mind that there was an update or a downgrade uh, a year or two ago, I think, that basically got rid of that, or more importantly, it made it so that ore was no longer gathered by L players in the vicinity, and instead was only gathered by the eight players nearby. So just a heads up if you have more 
more than eight people, you want to be careful about that. But nitro is always going to be valuable. Again, it is gathering day. So or in general is going to be valuable and you can go for infinium. You could go for, you know, the stuff in Cursed Skyland, whatever. Either way, it's it's really, really good to gather or as much as you can. Uh, speaking of or, there's also going to end up being meteorite fragments. Now, meteorite fragments used to be extremely valuable because they are very, very tedious to farm. Basically, in the jungle biome, there is or Jurassic jungle biome. There's the tree canopy and the meteorite would be on top of the trees. It was very, very annoying to farm. Now we actually have a tome, a normal tome, not a legendary tome that you can repeatedly grind over and over. It's a meteorite tome. I think they added it for an event or something. I, I, I honestly forget where you get it, but I've got videos that cover it. Either way, that tome is invaluable. It has lowered the cost of meteorite fragments, but they are still valuable enough that you could just sell those while you're continually grinding dungeons or doing other things. Now, speaking of plants and ore, Delves is also going to be affected by this just because even though this is called Delve Day, what? And this is actually Gathering Day, the plants and ore are in the Delves. So a lot of those resources will end up being high value to players. Uh, most of all, you know, Bardium was one of the more expensive resources. Lots of people don't bother buying it though. So I'd say just be cautiously optimistic if you try to gather Delve resources. They have a high cost to players, but that's also because they don't sell very often. So people just kind of keep lifting up the price and then they lower the price and then eventually people start buying and they go, oh my God, I'm selling all my stuff. And then they try to increase it again. And it's a, it's a whole thing. It's pretty ridiculous. Ridiculous. Uh, another thing that's affected, of course, is Fishing Day. Now, Fishing 2.0 was added to the game a while ago. Um, I'll be perfectly honest with you guys. I haven't maxed out the new fishing. I already did the 15K fish badge from years and years and years ago. And the Fishing 2.0 essentially wants you to grind 15K fish. So you players that are coming to Trove more recently, the new fishing is actually really well done and fleshed out because it means that you're not just grinding the 15k fish you are also progressing through the fishing skill tree and so on and so forth so i am just saying that i don't want to grind 15k fish again because i don't want to waste my time uh so anyways the main reason i'm talking about the fishing is because there are rare fish that you can get that will not be tradable on the player market but are still tradable to other players it means you're gonna have to essentially go into trade chat uh, and start arguing with people and trying to get them to buy your fish they're not always going to end up being high value, but generally speaking, it might take you a couple days to find someone who's interested in it. Mastery farmers in particular, and people that are wanting to, you know, progress through the skill tree will end up going for it. Uh, there's also going to end up being this bad boy right here, which is the Mark of the Angler, uh, or Merc Water Marks Mucker. What, it's a fishing line, okay? Uh, and you need Mark of the Angler in order to end up getting it. So the fishing line itself is going to be required to get the newer, fishing tome there's a tome that you can get exclusively from fishing i don't think that i have it uh if i'm not mistaken right yeah the electrolyte enthusiast tome so this is a tome that is incredibly valuable you can see i don't know anyone who would actually buy this for this value uh, i think it's just because it's so ridiculously rare and people just don't fish because uh, it's boring and so there's just not many of these on the player market so i'm just saying it's it's there you could grind for it and sell it on the market it's, you know it's, it's definitely worth your time if you can stomach fishing <laughs> Sunlight bulbs and gardening 2.0 is also going to be affected by uh, gathering day. So the sun biome, the peaceful hills biome, uh, sometimes you can end up finding these uh, windmills and sunlight dungeons or whatever, and you can end up gathering a whole bunch of sunlight bulbs and selling those on the player market. Uh, gardening in general is also going to end up being something that's quite valuable to players. More particularly, because gardening is so time gated and so boring, um, it's something that you can do kind of in the off time, just just leave it in the background cooking while you're doing other stuff. <sighs> but most of all, you're gonna wanna try and get some of the vegetables. There's going to end up being the onionito, the tater tots and stuff like that. Those are items you want to save rather than sell on the player market because usually events will come around that will require those items to craft for whatever reason. Not usually, like don't wash them or anything, just try to sell the raw resource. Um, Players like myself and many, many others would rather just buy those resources off of the market than bother investing time back into Gardening 2.0 just because it's 
it's just gardening. Believe it or not, Glim is also going to end up being another resource that's affected by gathering day. Uh, you can just go around and gather it off of pretty much anything, you know, grass, whatever. Uh, the main reason you wanna get it though is not necessarily to sell it. You can sell the Glim, but it's gonna be very low value. Most of all, in the treasure isle biomes, you can end up finding the merchant ships. So that's uh, essentially going to end up being this brown ship right here. If you find one of these, there'll be a merchant on it. And sometimes you can buy like mounts, allies, sales, that kind of stuff. And those sell for a decent amount of players. The allies themselves are usually ally boxes. And so you could take the risk, sometimes it's profitable, to unbox a whole bunch of them with Glim that you either farmed yourself or bought off of the player market. And usually, not always, you can turn a profit if you end up gaining the rare allies. Okay, I think that's it for gathering day. Gem day obviously doesn't affect flux, so we won't get into it. Adventure day, not as much as well. I mean, I guess if you want to sell adventure boxes, but this is a good time to mention that if you are planning on selling anything, you want to try and watch the player market for a little while. I would recommend a week or two of dedicating your time to watching the player market uh, just before you start selling stuff. Because for example, if you're trying to sell adventure boxes, on adventure day, you're not gonna make as much profit as selling it on another day when they're harder to farm for. It's just kind of how people's brains work. It's kind of like manipulating the stock market, uh, but it's in a video game and not nearly as complicated. But even then, I still haven't learned how to market flip and I don't care to. So now moving on to XP day, this is actually going to end up affecting quite a few different things, namely Paragon level and uh, your PVP and stuff like that, like Bomber Royale stuff. Excuse me, I'm stumbling over my tongue, talking too fast. Uh, so Bomber Royale, oddly enough, you can grind and sell various resources from it. And one of the big things that people still value, I don't know why, is going to end up being these PVP boxes, I guess just because they're rare and nobody actually wants to go for them. So anyways, uh, with having more arena win XP, it means that you'll slowly grind up more of the weekly amount of these boxes you can earn, and then you could sell those on the player market. But more particularly, you will gain more player XP, which means that you will gain more Paragon levels. Now, just to give a brief summary in case someone's new here and hasn't played Trove in many years, as so many of you have reported to me in the comments and in the live streams and stuff. Paragon levels are essentially get a class to level 30 and every level beyond that point is a Paragon level up to level 1000 before it resets to one. The Paragon levels don't end up giving you any stats. It's not like Diablo or every other game that has Paragon levels where you perpetually get stronger. All Paragon levels do in Trove is gives you a new resource so that you can end up crafting various mounts and allies and crap for mastery, but also crystal rings. Crystal ring boxes in particular are going to end up being tradable and thus very valuable, but it is also going to end up being heavily RNG. So very, very random what crystal ring quality you'll end up getting out of these boxes. So you could take the risk and craft a bunch of smaller boxes and sell them, or you could just go for the big boy boxes like the crystal three boxes or the very, very rare boxes of golden ring boxes. So it basically is like a way that you can guarantee a crystal four ring, which I'll get into that momentarily, because first I have to kind of explain that the Paragon levels are stupid, awarded for each prime Paragon level earned as the Solarian. Prime numbers, Google that and you'll see that as you go through one to a thousand, there is far less prime numbers as you get closer to a thousand. So you're essentially being punished the higher level you get for a character. Now you have two options. You can either use your favorite class in the game and grind Trovian loops, which is just earned from Paragon levels. And then you can convert it into these Paragon primal cube things. Uh, and then essentially what you wanna do with these boxes is they will give you a prime loop for whatever your active class is. So what I would recommend if you want to main whatever character you want, grind up a bunch of these boxes and then swap to a more popular character that has a more valuable crystal ring on the player market, right? or just suffer through it and use a class that you don't want to use so that you can get prime levels and flux is your number one priority. You gotta do that Sigma grind set and then you end up quitting. Um, so the crystal boxes themselves kind of have an interesting mechanic. These boxes give crystal ring and uh, crystal ring one and up. Uh, but if you end up loot collecting a bunch of crystal rings, you can get these ring crafters tickets. So this is a box that guarantees you crystal two and higher. Uh, and then if you loot collect 
higher tiered crystal rings, you can eventually craft these boxes for the gilded ring crafters tickets. Uh, and these are essentially going to end up being crystal three guaranteed. But if we end up going to the market here, we can take a really, really quick peek and put in golden signatory boxes. And you can see that the value of these is significantly higher than any of the other boxes, because every time you craft one of those crystal three boxes, you have a very rare chance of getting one of these boxes, which is a guaranteed crystal four ring, which is the highest quality ring that you can get. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that the passive abilities are going to be good for you, but we'll just ignore that because you're just trying to make flux so this is where your favorite character might be the knight and unfortunately the knight's crystal ring boxes are the cheapest as opposed to something like the vanguard which seems to be a little bit more valuable hmm so that's kind of what i mean when i say you might want to swap classes to a more popular character just so that you can make that little bit of extra profit Ooh, okay i actually had to retake that more than once just because the first time i just stumbled all over my words but i think i did a good job there if you haven't liked the video already do it now because so help me i need the moral support moving on to loot day this is not the last day that we'll talk about because we're gonna have a general like stuff that you can grind all week but for loot day it affects magic find which can affect those of you that don't have a lot of magic find especially if you have patron as you can see 400 extra magic find uh because stellar gear can be extremely valuable my buddy nintendo gamer over on youtube already has a video covering it so i've never bothered making one myself because he already did it so why um essentially you grind and get stellar gear and you just loot collect that and then sell the stellar souls and you can actually make profit uh, quite a bit actually you make quite a bit of flux out of that i don't sell my stellar souls because i'm a freak who just again i i hoard everything in this game there's something wrong with me uh, another thing that you can do is just sell the raw stellar gear you wouldn't think players want it but they do because new players will come to the game they buy up stellar gear so that they can get the pr boost so that they can enter uh geode surface and stuff and then they can end up getting crystal gear faster so just something to keep in mind but that requires you to skip over the player market and instead use trade chat, uh, you know, same as the fish that I mentioned earlier. Now, another thing that I have in a maybe pile, because I don't know if it's affected by loot day, is the Sundered Uplands five-star dungeons, because the dungeons will end up having a chest that can spawn, that you can use a key on, and it has a very rare chance of dropping tradable mounts that are very, very valuable. Um, just because they're so extremely rare and so costly to craft those keys over and over again. But I don't know if it's affected by loot day, which is why I kind of have it in the maybe pile. Uh, there's also going to end up being trophy heads from enemies. So now let's move on to any day. Any day is going to affect pretty much everything. Uh, I don't think any of the things that I'm going to be talking about to you guys right now is going to be affected by any of the gathering day or whatever. So just keep that in mind. Uh, there's going to end up being trophy heads from enemies, which more often than not i mean they're just not tradable on the player market but are going to end up being an item that players find valuable especially some of the sundered upland stuff just because some of it is going to end up being used to uh craft some very very rare like uh mounts and items and junk like that so just keep that in mind there's also going to end up being the tomes which as i mentioned there is a lot of them there's going to end up being the uh, legendary tomes which will rarely end up giving you tradable stuff usually it's stuff that is related to your character uh, but there is going to end up being some of these other tomes so there's the ash one is uh, a pretty decent one robotic salvage um, there's a plasmium tome which plasmium as far as i recall is not very valuable uh, and then there's going to end up being the meteorite tome which i don't have favorited for whatever reason uh, usually Robotic salvage is going to end up being your best bet in terms of flux making just because a lot of things take that resource. But I would recommend that you just go through your normal tomes and check the player market and kind of just figure out like, OK, well, how much of this am I going to be able to sell for this and so on and so forth? Right. Uh, speaking of the market, let's talk about market flipping. Is it still viable? Yes. And because the taxes update that was added last year essentially was the devs trying to stave off people that had duplicated flux and unfortunately the devs are kind of stupid and don't realize that the players that have duplicated flux have infinite flux at this point they have billions of flux so the tax update didn't affect them so who did it affect well it didn't affect anybody at the end game really because everybody at the end game just went whoa let's just increase the price of everything to avoid the taxes right so it actually made the game a lot less accessible for new players 
Get wrecked, devs. That's what happens when you put something stupid in the game without consolidating with the actual player base first. Anyways, moving on from that frustration, credit pouches in particular are always going to end up being your pay to win, very, very easy way of making flux. Uh, keep in mind that credit pouches, as with everything, will fluctuate in price. You can usually sell credit pouches for a lot when a win, <laughs> if a big update hits Trove. So Arcopium is hoping that in March, we'll see the big update coming to Trove that hopefully will add like a new class or something interesting, anything, please Trove Gods, be kind and actually give us a good update this year instead of just nothing but garbage. Uh, when the game is at its most popular, when there's a new thing that everyone's really hyped about, credit pouches and the price of basically everything goes through the roof because everyone's like, me, 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 I want it first, you know, myself included. Uh, usually during that time, I buy up a bunch of credit pouches on the cash shop and just sell them. And well, that's why I have over 200 million flux. <laughs> It's not because I earned it with all the tips that I talked about in today's video. So anyways, uh, another rule of thumb that I want to give you guys as a tip is consumable items are your friend. So that's why Nitro and various resources like that always remain valuable because these are items that are constantly being pooled and ripped out of the in-game economy as players end up consuming those items. So just something to keep in mind. Um, neon scrap ca cache, cash, caches. They are dropped from neon enemies in Luminopolis and so on and so forth. Those boxes can be quite valuable because it's a lot of resources related to the heroic update from years ago that introduced the Vanguard and so on and so forth. Um, there's also a trick that you can end up doing for a bunch of XP where if you go to the Luminopolis, there's going to end up being the NPCs that have a quest to earn plasmium and so on and so forth. And you can just um, nom, 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 open up a bunch of those scrap boxes right in front of them. And they'll just be like, oh, you just got a whole bunch of plasmium. So uh, with that said, I think that covers everything. If there's anything I missed, sound off in the comments. You know, you guys let me know because I, I, I don't know if I caught everything, but I think I did a pretty good job. And I would appreciate if you'd smash like stuff for more, buy the merch you want to support the channel. <laughs> and have a wonderful day, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much.